All right, guys, today we're going to talk about continuity. But to talk about continuity, we have to start with uh, one-sided limits. That's probably the best way to start. So what is a one-sided limit? So let's draw a graph here. And let's say we have a function that does something like this. It stops here, it goes up, and it continues to do that. Let's say this number here, we call it, say, L1. And this is going to be x just, no, x naught. Let's give it a name. And this one is going to be L2. So, well, let's take a look at what happens whenever we approach x from the left. So we're going to be approaching on this interval while continuing this way. So we're just going to approach x from this direction, x not from this direction. And if we travel on the graph as x approaches x not, we see that our y coordinates are going to be approaching L1. So we denote that by saying that the limit as x approaches x not, and we throw a negative here to denote that it's from the left uh, of this function, which I should have said this is y equals f of x, of this function f of x is going to be, in this case, L1. So your y coordinate that you're approaching when you travel on the function on the left. So it's going to be L1. Now you can imagine what's going to happen when we come to x naught from the left. So when we're going to go on the left, we're going to be using this other part of the interval. So we're going to be approaching x naught from the right now. And we're going to be hitting that L2. So we can say that the limit as x approaches x naught from the right, that's the plus that, that represents that, of f of x is L2. Before I erase, let me ask you one question. What would you think that the limit would be? Do we prefer L1 or do we prefer L2? Well, in this case, since L1 is not equal to L2, we say that the limit itself as x approaches x naught of f of x does not exist. So there's no limit because you cannot pick. You cannot say, well, I'm going to prefer to do the one on the right, the one on the left. You can't. So you just say the limit does not exist. So we're going to use this to um, try to talk about continuity. So let me erase and then we'll get to it. All right. So now we're going to talk about continuity. And what do we, th the, intuitively, what would a function, what a, would a continuous function be? Or look like, the graph of one, I should say. Well. Firstly, continuity where? Because I can have that same function or sort of the same function we drew before. And you would say, well, that, that has a cut right there. It doesn't seem like it would be continuous. Well, continuous where? Because it doesn't seem to be continuous at x0 because you have to lift your pencil or pen in this case or marker to be able to draw it. But if you pick any other point, let's say here, x1, well, the function is continuous here. It doesn't matter what happened before. You, you draw it there, and the function is continuous. So we kind of want to talk about continuity, firstly, at, one, at what point. So what would be the definition of continuity? So let's go, ahead, let's go at it in a sort of intuitive way. So let's try to draw the things that would not be continuous. So we're going to do the opposite of a definition. We're going to look at what is not continuous. So what kind of things can happen that would preclude a function from being continuous at a point. So let's say first we have that example that we have here that we already discussed in some sort of detail. So let's say we have that situation going on and we have x naught here. So what we had in this situation, we already talked about it, the limit as x goes to x naught of f of x, all my functions will be f of x, does not exist. So if you have that the limit as x goes to x naught of a function does not exist, the function 
will not be continuous. So, so you would have to eliminate this possibility. So the first thing you're going to require from a limit is, from a function to be continuous, is that the limit as x goes to x0 of f of x must exist. And I should say here a function f is continuous at x equals x0 if and only if, no, right, just one, well, if and only if, two f's for the if and only if. And I cannot encroach on my next graph, but all right, that's going to be our definition. We're building it. So let's see what other things, what other thing could happen that would be a problem. Well, you could have that now your graph, the, the, your function does have a limit at the point x0, but the function just skips through and doesn't take that value. Uh, so in that case, when you go and look at the vertical line x equals x0, the function doesn't take any value. So what is happening here that is breaking continuity? f of x0 is not defined, is undefined. In other words, to have continuity, you need now that the function be defined at x0. Or just say f of x0 exists. All right, so what else can we have that would break continuity? Well, let's say the limit exists and the function is defined, and you say, well, that's it, then we, we're continuous, but you can still break it if you do this. You define the function, so f of x0 is defined to be this, whatever that would be. The limit, let's call it L, is this. So limit exists and it's L. The function is defined. So we're hitting the first two right there, but f of x0 is not equal to L. And that breaks continuity as well. So the last thing we're going to require for a function to be continuous is that uh, f of x0 actually is equal to the limit as x goes to x0 of f of x. Meaning that this point cannot be out here. So what you would end up with is that the graph, the limit exists at the moment, but then the function takes that value, so you get that it's continuous. So you don't have to make that circle. The function turns out to be continuous. So that, those are the three conditions you need for continuity. One, the limit exists. Two, the function exists. The function is defined at x0. And secondly, the function and the limit match. They are the same. If those three things are, are um, satisfied, we say the function is continuous at, at x equals x0. Now, if you have an entire interval and you want to know if the function is continuous, then you have to know that the function has to be continuous at every point of the interval. And if that happens, then you say the function is continuous on an interval. So that right there is your definition of continuity.